Recently, I've noticed a lot of people online being hit with a wave of nostalgia for that early 2010s internet humor. You know, back when people were obsessed with rage comics, troll face, bronies, and hating on Justin Bieber. Yeah, it was the good old days. And with this early 2010s nostalgia wave in mind, today I'd like to go back and take a look at a man who became an icon of this era of meme culture. He's the ambassador of internet trolls around the world, the troll a guy. Yeah, you know this guy. La 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 All right, that's enough cringe. We can move forward. Back in 2010, this video featuring a Russian man giving a bizarre baritone vocal performance became a favorite bait and switch video amongst internet jokesters. Think of it as like the Russian version of the Rick Roll. The Mr. Trollolo video was weird and it got the attention of meme culture. I mean, the guy's just gallivanting around the room, singing and laughing with this cheery yet somehow smug expression on his face. It was just destined to be a meme. While most people have encountered Mr. Trollolo on the internet, very few actually know the story of the man behind the meme. Who exactly is Mr. Trollolo, and why did his performance recorded in the 1970s become famous on the internet 40 years later? And what has been the man's reaction to becoming an internet meme? We're gonna answer these questions in today's video. This is the story of Mr. Trollolo. Hold it! Are you tired of getting trolled by your face and body wash? Rick rolled by brands that promise the most but just leave your skin feeling irritated? I know I was until I switched to the sponsor of today's video. Black Wolf, baby. Black Wolf is a men's wellness brand with products made from the best possible active ingredients to clean, soothe, and hydrate your skin. Plus, it's vegan. The face wash infused with charcoal keeps my skin feeling smooth, and the body wash is amazing. Seriously, this stuff is the real deal, and don't even get me started on the fragrance. Just know that sage and citrus goes a long way. Black Wolf cut out the middleman and shipped directly, so you don't have to pay more for unnecessary steps between the manufacturer and retailer. And you can even subscribe to get refills delivered to suit your schedule, meaning you can avoid a bad skin day because you'll always be stocked up. This is some good stuff, and you guys can join the Black Wolf pack by clicking the link below. That's blackwolfnation.com slash wavywebsurf, and you'll get a free toiletry bag and a free body scrubber when you purchase Black Wolf's best-selling face and body wash bundle. That's the stuff you guys just saw me use. So make sure you check that link out, and without any further ado, let's get into the story. Before the memes, before Trollolo, there was Edward Kill, and Edward went through a lot before becoming the internet meme icon you know him as today. Let's start from the beginning. Edward was born September 4th, 1934 in Smolensk, USSR. And as you can probably imagine, growing up in Soviet Russia during one of the most tumultuous eras in human history, it probably wasn't easy for young Edward. During World War II, Edward's kindergarten was bombed during a Nazi invasion of the city. He survived only to soon after become separated from his mother during the city's evacuation effort. For the next two years, Edward would be an orphan and he was relocated about a thousand kilometers to the east in the city of Bakovo, where he stayed at a foster home. This home was said to have been in poor condition, lacking basic facilities and food at the time was scarce. It would be easy for someone in this position to become dejected and depressed, but not Edward. Edward found hope in his own voice. He was a gifted singer, and during wartime, he often left the foster home to visit the local military hospital where he would sing for the wounded soldiers. He honed his voice during the dark times and remained confident that things would eventually get better. After Edward's home city of Smolensk was liberated from the Nazis in 1943, his life began to improve. After the liberation, Edward was taken from the foster home and relocated back to his home city of Smolensk. And fortunately, he was reunited with his mother here. After the war completely ended, the two would move to Leningrad where Edward would finish school and enter college. Around the time of his college education, Edward would meet a woman named Zoya and the two would get married and have a son together. Also during college, Edward's vocal talent would become apparent to the Soviet public when he began performing at opera houses around Leningrad, where he would earn fame thanks to his bold baritone voice. <laughs> Folks around Leningrad really liked Ed, and his part-time singing gig would eventually blossom into a full-time one when there was more of a demand for his vocal talent. 
Throughout the 1950s and 60s, Edward Kill became renowned throughout Russia for his performances of pop tunes and Russian folk songs. Which brings us to a particular Russian song that was a favorite of Mr. Edward Kill. A song called I Am Very Glad As I'm Finally Returning Back Home. The original version of this song was composed by a famous 20th century Russian songwriter named Arkady Ostrovsky. Now the original version of this song was said to contain lyrics describing an American-like cowboy riding his horse home after being out on the trail for a long time and just having this overwhelming feeling of relief, you know, that he's about to be home and able to relax. And with this song referencing an American cowboy in mind, consider the uh, Cold War propaganda machine running on all cylinders. Edward Kill would be out of his mind if he performed this song publicly. Lyrics aside though, he loved the composition and its melody and overall positive vibe. He wanted to bring it to the big stage so he got creative. Basically, Edward took the melody of this song and removed all the lyrics and replaced them with non-lexical vocal sounds. You know, the la 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 la, tra la 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 la, tro la 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 you know what I mean. And what do you know, the tro la la song as we know it now was born. <laughs> Edward began performing his version of this song in the late 1960s, but the famous performance you're all familiar with was recorded in 1976 on a live television broadcast. While Edward's version of this song was indeed popular, it wasn't like a chart-topping creation by any means. It was just a happy, feel-good song that he had in his repertoire that he would bust out from time to time. Over the years, Edward's version of I Am Very Glad As I'm Finally Returning Back Home would be largely forgotten by the Soviet public and Kill would move on with his career, performing until he retired in the 1990s, opting to spend more time with his family. Now, let's fast forward from the 1990s to 2010. The Cold War's over, Putin is riding a horse, and this little creation known as the internet is really popular around the world. And on the internet, memes are taking off like never before on websites like 4chan and reddit. Rage comics, advice animal image macros, and of course the troll face are all in vogue. Troll face in particular was arguably at its peak popularity at this point and so was the fascination with online trolling in general. In the early 2010s, being known as an internet troll was like the cool hip thing that every 14 year old wanted to do. You know, you go on a forum and make a rage bait post or send somebody a troll face and then you run to your high school buddies and you're like, bro, I epically trolled this guy on the internet. That's so much karma, dude. And there were many tactics of trolling that were popular at this time but here are the big three in my opinion. You've got guys that would make troll bait YouTube videos, kind of like what Chad Warden did, or you had folks that would write a rage bait comment or a forum post, and then you had people using spoof links to send an unsuspecting internet user to a bait and switch video akin to the classic Rickroll. And this Rickroll type trolling is where we circle all the way back to our boy Edward Kill and his famous 1976 performance. On December 9th of 2009, a Russian speaking YouTuber known as Real Papa Pit dug up an old archive of this performance and uploads it to his YouTube channel, adding the trollolol tagline to the title of the song. Another YouTuber would clip just the portion of Edward laughing and upload it to his channel. <laughs> This out of context clip of Edward laughing would be reposted to the RWTF subreddit where it intrigued Western internet users who had no idea who the man was or why the hell he was laughing and singing so strangely. Needless to say, the video and the song was one of those things that would stick with you. You know, you would watch the video and it would remain with you for the rest of the day and the song stuck in the back of your head and you just couldn't get it out. <laughs> And with this effect in mind, this is where the trolls stepped in and started spreading this thing all over the place to mess with people. It worked exactly like the Rick roll. You make a post or a call to action prompting people to click a link, they click it, and well, they wind up somewhere where they didn't want to be. In this case, it was Edward laughing at their ass for getting tricked. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It was a lighthearted prank and was all in good fun, and hell, some people decided to stick around and hear the rest of Edward's song. Because of the excessive amount of lolololols in the song, and the fact that the video itself was funny, and trolls were heavily involved in making this popular on the internet, that trollolol title just kind of worked and stuck with this video. That's what the internet would forever remember Edward's song as. Trollolol would get tens of millions of views in the following months, and the video became the hot meme, with it not only being popular online, but becoming popular in mainstream culture. La, 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 la. By mid-2010, this performance was plastered across the internet and was gobbling up YouTube clicks. It had established itself as an instant viral video classic by this point. But what of the man behind the Trollolol song, the talented Edward Kill? Well, unbeknownst to many, the then 75-year-old Edward was very much aware of his living meme status, and boy was he thrilled that so many people were enjoying his song. Edward was beyond happy that his old song was given a new lease on life, and felt a profound sense of joy that it was bringing laughter to an entirely new generation. He embraced being Mr. Trollolol, and saw the internet's sudden obsession with him as an unexpected blessing. At the time of the meme's peak popularity, Edward was frequently asked to sing the Trollolo song by passersby on the streets of St. Petersburg, where if time permitted, he would cheerfully oblige. Such as this example recorded by the Murinsky YouTube channel. <laughs> Eventually, Edward would actually address the internet directly and thank everyone for keeping Trollolo alive, even inviting them to create their own lyrics for the song if they so pleased. It seemed like he was having so much fun with being a living meme, and about a year and a half or so after the Mr. Trollolo meme really popped off, he would actually come out of retirement for one last song and do a live performance of the Trollolo song on stage in a way circling back to that big stage performance in 76 that started the genesis of Trollolo. <laughs> it would be an understatement to say that Mr. Trollolo was a beloved figure. He was a meme icon and represented the internet's offbeat sense of humor. His legacy as a meme will live on forever. That said, unfortunately, Edward himself is just a mortal man like you or I. On June 4th of 2012, the world was met with tragic news when it was being reported that Mr. Edward Kill had passed away from complications caused by a stroke. He was 77 years old. When this news hit the internet, in a show of appreciation, users came together, flocking to the Trollolo video and left kind words and paid their respects to the Russian baritone who had brought joy to millions around the world. As an orphaned boy growing up in one of the darkest eras of human history, it would have been easy for Edward to be a person lost to time a nameless casualty of circumstances out of his control. But Edward found a purpose early in life that not only guided him to success, but gave him hope. Bringing joy and happiness to others was that purpose. Through the vehicle of his voice, he helped others escape from their own momentary struggles to get away from stress, and for a brief moment, smile. From the wounded soldiers in the military hospital to the opera house patrons of Leningrad and the millions of people on the internet, Edward reminded us to laugh a little, and for that, 
he'll be dearly missed. And that, my friends, is the story of Edward Kill, Mr. Trollolol, and how his 1976 performance became an internet meme. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comments section, and make sure you let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.